Facebook Dynamic Creatives allow you to treat your Facebook ads similar to Google responsive ads, where you provide a number of headlines, descriptions, creatives, and then the platform will mix and match those together, making combinations that it thinks will best suit each individual user who's going to see the ad. Now, that might sound perfect, but just like with responsive ads on Google, either display or search, there are some limitations with Facebook's dynamic creatives. But in this video, I want to run you through what dynamic creatives are, where you can turn that feature on, how to set them up, and then how to review performance for each of the different components. I want to start off by giving a visual overview of what dynamic creatives are with Facebook. And if you've watched a number of videos on our channel, you can probably tell that we are not designers. So rather than putting something together myself, I tried to find a visual that was already put together. And the best one is from our friends at Tenuity. Here you can see that they added in image variants, that they have a circle, triangle, and square, two body copy variants, red and blue, and then one headline variant. What Facebook allows you to do is upload all of those assets in a single ad in the platform. And then what will come out is going to be those six creatives that you see on the side. There's two with the circle image, but you can see a red and a blue body copy. There's two with the triangle image, again, red and blue, and then two with the square image, red and blue again. And they all have the same black headline variant included because we only added one headline to the ad creative. So what this is showing you is that Facebook takes all of the elements that you provide, whether image, body copy, headlines, but also including descriptions and calls to action, combines them dynamically to serve to individual users on the Facebook platform. So again, very similar to a responsive search ad on Google or Microsoft ads, but with all of the ad assets you're able to use on Facebook. This Facebook image, I think, does the best job of outlining what you can upload into your dynamic creatives. For most components, you're able to upload five different variants. So for the text or the introductory text, headlines, link descriptions, and call to action buttons, you can use up to five different versions. And then for images or videos, you can add in 10 image options or five video options max. Since one of the ad formats is single image or single video, you can mix and match the images and videos to where you had five and 10, two and eight, whatever you would prefer, but you can only have 10 creative assets for each dynamic ad on Facebook. Now that we know what they look like and what you can add in, let me show you where you can create dynamic search ads in the Facebook platform. I'm going to be using a couple active client accounts to show you some things today. So that's why we have some of the information blurred out, but you'll be able to tell what we're talking about as I go through this. Let's go ahead and create a new campaign so I can show you where the dynamic ad controls live. I'm gonna come over here to create. And then the first thing I wanna cover is campaign objectives really quickly. All of the campaign objectives that you see here, all six of these are eligible for dynamic ads on Facebook. Now there may be some obscure ad set goal optimization events that might cause dynamic ad creatives to be turned off. But from what I can tell at a high level for all of these campaign objectives, you'll be able to use this functionality. If you're new to Facebook ads and don't know what these objectives do, or if you've only recently been adopted into the new simplified campaign objectives on Facebook, you can check out the video at the top of the screen right now to get an overview of how each of them work and also how they map to previous campaign objectives when we had a much more robust list. I'm just gonna choose one real quick to keep us moving and then click continue. All of the information at the campaign level needs to be set up for whatever you want your campaign to be. But for dynamic ad creatives, we need to go to the ad set settings. Again, as far as I know, no matter what your conversion location is, the next option is going to be dynamic creative. Similar to a dynamic search ads versus keyword search ads ad group in Google ads, dynamic creative lives at the ad set level. Once you turn it on and make it a dynamic ad set, you cannot turn it off. So all creatives in this ad set would be eligible for dynamic creatives. To turn them on, all you have to do is toggle this little switch. And now we get a pop-up that I do want to spend some time on because it confirms that we can now have creative elements that will be automatically generated into variations for the audience. The last setting down at the bottom says that some settings such as send to messenger are not yet available for ads using dynamic creative. So this is where we found the limitation. You cannot use dynamic creative if you want to send a user to messenger on Facebook 
But then the second piece is the thing I want to call out because this even made me change my thinking about how I would set up an ad set. Certain variations, such as automatically cropping an image or applying a carousel template, depend on the creative elements and placements selected. So when you turn on dynamic creatives, you do have limitations for automatically cropping an image or applying a carousel template. But additionally, when you turn on dynamic creatives, you will not be able to customize your ad by placement. If you're not aware of what that is, or you're interested in learning more, you can check out the video at the top of the screen right now. But here really quickly, I'm gonna give you a run through of what that looks like. So I'm gonna click cancel, just so we can come down here and create a new traffic ad. When I scroll down to the ad format and the ad media, I can go ahead and add an image real quick. Our logo is very easy to use because it doesn't quite fit in every single placement. So if we wanted to customize the ads by placement, you would see these three line sections here that would allow us to come in and we can edit the entire group where we can change the image, we can crop it, we can add primary text, headline, description, we can change all the information for the two placements that are being included here. That allows us to make sure that no matter what image we use, it's going to look as good as it possibly can in each of the different placements because we've customized it to make it look that way. Now, if we go back to the ad set settings and we do turn on the dynamic creative and we do accept these different terms, you'll see that although it didn't call it out, we're not able to use Messenger, WhatsApp, or calls. So only website and app traffic can work for dynamic creative. But then if we go to the image itself, and we come over here and scroll down, you'll see that it says image, videos, and slideshows one of 10, but there's no set of line items for us to optimize here. We can edit the media, but it only gives us the crop option. We cannot change the image, add those headlines, those descriptions, all of those things are gone. And this is a very basic crop functionality. So if we look at vertical, square, or horizontal, we can maybe try and make this image fit. And it looks fine for horizontal and square, but vertical is going to be really tough because the image is just not optimized for that. So if you're going to use dynamic creative, I highly suggest that you use images, videos, and slideshows that will fit in every single orientation that we have here by default. Otherwise, you're going to have some pretty ugly looking creatives out there. For now, I'm gonna leave this as original, X out. So again, I could add more images and videos. I could even create a video if I wanted to do that. You've already seen what that process looks like. So I'm gonna go ahead and skip down here to the bottom. And then each of these different text fields is going to work pretty much the same way. So I'm just gonna use headlines just to show you the functionality. We'll go ahead and add in my first headline. And then to add the second variant out of our five, you just need to add the headline option. And then you can add in a second variant here. You can click text suggestions, and I'm sorry these have to be blurred out, but what this functionality does is that it takes headlines that have been used from other creatives in this account and allows you to just click a button to add them to your new ad creative. The problem is all of these are being used in this live client account, so I'm not gonna do that because I don't wanna have to blur all of them out. But this functionality does make it really easy to add headlines that you've already used elsewhere in your account, so you don't have to type them all out. But again, you can add up to five of each of these different text components to create your dynamic creative. I went ahead and turned on the ad preview on the right, just so we could see what these creatives would look like as we're moving through it. But really quick before I talk about that, the last thing I wanna talk about with the ad components is going to be the call to action. So here you can see that it defaults to learn more, but let's say I wanted to compare that versus other calls to action. All I need to do is click the button. You can then choose from the preset Facebook drop downs. So let's say I wanted to subscribe and I want somebody to watch more as well. Now we have three different call to actions that we can use on this ad creative. So I just mentioned that we would talk about the ad preview. The first thing you'll notice is that it's only pulling the first headline and the first call to action that I added in here. This preview functionality by default only uses the first option. It does not cycle through the way Google ads does. So if you wanna see what your previews would look like with different combinations of headlines and descriptions and creatives, you need to come up to advanced preview. It'll still default to the first line item for each row, but you can customize and change your headline. And then you could also choose a different call to action if you wanted to. And in this instance, if I were using the intro text and the link description text, those would also be drop downs that you could use here. And I wanted to draw attention to this for a specific reason. 
just like with responsive search ads, we need to make sure that all of the different components of our ad flow together. The idea of using all these different headlines, descriptions, calls to actions, creatives are wonderful, but if you create a Frankenstein of an ad that doesn't make any sense from each asset and each component to the next, you're gonna have some really confused audience members. So when you put together all of your dynamic ad creatives on Facebook, make sure you at least double check to make sure that every component works with every other one. And if it doesn't, you might need to create a new ad that will lean into that different messaging so that each ad unit won't be confusing in and of itself. Once you're done setting up all of your different dynamic ad creative assets, all you need to do is click publish and it'll be live in the account. As I mentioned, this is a live client account. So I'm actually just going to hit X up in the top over here, and then I'm gonna discard all these drafts. Once you've launched your dynamic ad creative, there are ways for you to see how it is performing in your account. The first is going to be very simple, and that's simply to navigate to the ad portion of the interface. And here you can see at a high level how this dynamic ad creative is performing. This account is on a very limited run event campaign, which is why we only have one creative with a handful of dynamic assets, because they're all promoting the same thing. They all will work just fine together. And there's only one ad in this ad set. But when you have a dynamic ad set, you can add multiple different ads into that ad set. So don't let that deter you from making multiple different ads with different messaging. You can still have multiple line items for ads in here. Just make sure that each unit is one singular idea. But in this ad, I have a handful of headlines and I'm using a few different calls to action because I wanted to see which one would perform best. So when you're trying to review performance of these dynamic assets, you need to come up to breakdown, navigate down to dynamic creative element, and then you can choose which component you want to view individual asset performance for. As I mentioned, we have a handful of headlines and different calls to action in use here. And since calls to action are from a dropdown, I'm going to choose that one so we don't have to blur anything out. So let's come down here to call to action. And here you can see the performance for the learn more, subscribe, get access, and sign up calls to action. They each have different amounts spent, link clicks, they've got different cost per result, which is just a link click here. You can even check the frequency as well. And we can look at click through rate, all of the different ways that we can analyze our performance for individual creatives. You can also do that for the individual components of your ad. One limitation that Facebook has with dynamic creatives is that you cannot view the performance of the call to action with the headline. So we couldn't see how my three headlines match up to my four calls to action, but we can at least see them individually to determine which call to action performs best, which headline performs best on average, even if we can't see the combination of all of the different assets. So again, all of that performance review is going to be just in the breakdown section and by dynamic creative element. Now, one thing that I like quite a bit about the dynamic creative elements is that you can view them not only at the ad level, but also at the ad set level. I jumped into a different client account because as I mentioned, that previous one is on a very limited run by design. This account has lots of different ad sets that look like this. I've chosen one singular ad set that has a handful of different ads in it, but at the ad set level, I can still choose breakdown dynamic creative element, and then I can come down and choose headline. So in this ad set, there are five different dynamic headlines that are being used across all of the creatives. And here, not only can I see all the performance that we saw before, but you'll also notice that this is a conversion campaign. And as long as Facebook has the data, you can see conversion performance by the different ad components as well. So if you end up running a dynamic ad set, and you have maybe 10 different ad creatives in there, and you overlap some headlines to other ads, but not across the board, you can easily review performance at the ad set level instead of either reviewing performance at an ad level one by one and trying to infer results, or by downloading the data and putting it in an Excel pivot table. You can see it pretty easily at the ad set level and decide which component is working best. Personally, I'm a big fan of Facebook dynamic creative when I have creative assets that don't need to be customized by individual placement. If you have a design team that is really able to narrow in and give you assets that work in all placements, these can be a phenomenal tool to make sure that you're giving new creative messaging, different combinations of text, and trying to convert users across the Facebook platform. But if you don't have those, you might need to think twice about whether or not you can use these dynamic ad creatives 
only because your creative assets aren't going to look as good as you want. Just remember, once you turn on dynamic creatives at the ad set level, you cannot turn them off. If you wanna give dynamic creatives a test and you decide that you don't like them as well, you'll need to create an entire new asset with the standard customizable Facebook ad creatives. Depending on the client accounts and their goals, we try to use dynamic creative in every instance we can because we know in other accounts we're going to be limited and sometimes they work really well, other times not so much. So if you've used dynamic ad creatives and you have a good, bad, neutral experience, I'd love to hear about it. But also if you have any questions about how to set up or optimize dynamic ad creatives on Facebook, please feel free to leave us a note in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the super thanks button.